everybody. Uh, this is the fourth episode of Meet the PhDs, and today we have Dr. Shavit with us. Um, hi, Gil. <laughs> so his first name is Gil, and um, uh, we're working in the same lab in the uh, Balgrist University Hospital. And uh, he has already completed his PhD in neurosciences, and he has one postdoc from Berkeley, and he is doing his second postdoc here in Zurich. So it's an honor to Thank have you here. Thank you. So much. <laughs> Thank you for honor being here on the show. Man. Thank you. And um, so I would ask him uh, the certain set of questions that I have asked other PhD students. But as of now, if you have observed that all the people who had come for uh, the interviews, they were all uh, the PhD students who are still in their PhDs. And this one is a bit different because he's completed his PhD. Sorry. So, he will <laughs> so you definitely have more insights and experiences for us. I hope so. So um, <laughs> thanks again. Yeah. And uh, let's start with the interview. So the first question that I would like to ask you here is that in which field and, uh, and department did you pursue your PhD in, which I have already mentioned, but for the audience. And also, what were the research questions that you addressed in your PhD? All right. Thank you, Shailen. Thank, thank you also you. for letting me uh, join this wonderful program of yours. Thank you. Uh, so to your question, so my PhD I did in uh, Geneva in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, it's called neuroscience, but practically it was more about um, cognitive neuroscience. Okay. So that means uh, neuroimaging and everything that goes into Behavior and trying to explain it in the level of the brain. Okay. So, uh, and my research question back then was about to investigate how expectancy to aversive stimulation, specifically pain, mm -hmm. um, can affect our basically um, decisions and perceptual decisions about our aversive experience of pain. So, mm -hmm. once we expect pain and we perceive pain, but also other more higher cognitive uh, decision like that's seemingly non related to this type of stimulations like moral decisions. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. And so why did you choose neuroscience and what was the moment like when you decided to pursue your PhD in the field? Like I'm taking it back to those times. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a very good question. Yeah, so um, actually my, I started my first degree, I'm originally from Israel, from Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. And my first degree I did something completely different from neuroscience. I started with the biotechnology okay. and environmental um, Sciences Engineering, mm -hmm. and it was interesting, of course, it was nice that we kind of into the field of biology, yeah. even, even before that in high school I thought I would study computer science, yeah. but then afterwards I so it's not really interesting, so then mm -hmm. I switched to biology. Yeah. But the idea is that one course in my second year, out of four in my first degree, um, when I had a course in physiology, human physiology, I remember, okay. there was one lecture, so after, you know, like, uh, teaching us all the different systems, the respiratory yeah. system, the, um, um, the um, nervous system, and all that, yeah. the teacher reached this phase when she explained that little molecules like dopamine and serotonin can affect your behavior. Yeah. And I was completely mind blown. <laughs> you know, like, like, what little molecules can affect your behavior? That's so cool, I want to do this. And that was <laughs> like, wow, aha moment for me. So that's, mm -hmm. this is the point that I was so fixed about neuroscience. I still didn't know at which, uh, at this phase, which type of neuroscience I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, molecular, neuroimaging, whatever. So I didn't even know there were so many. Um, but I definitely, that was the moment. And the second question, why did I choose to do a PhD? Or? Yeah, no, no, it was the second one was what was the moment like when you, you know, um, decided to pursue the. Ah, the second episode, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. So yeah, so uh, the moment came, so after my master, so the, I completed the first, um, so, uh, the first degree in Israel, second degree I did in uh, Munich, in the Max Planck, mm -hmm. and then afterwards I said, well, this is great, but I want to, actually in my master what I did is that, because I didn't know anything about neuroscience, so I chose an international program that allowed me to explore all the fields of neuroscience, it's called mm -hmm. systematic neuroscience, yeah. right? Basically there's a lot of problems like that in for master and also for PhDs, yeah. that you, do, you start with the first kind of a lot of rotations. Yeah. So you rotate like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks in different labs, so you yeah. can have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually see what you really hate, what you really like, mm -hmm. and all that. And afterwards, I said, okay, actually, the neuroimaging part is really cool. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said, well, that's nice. So then I 
had this decision whether to should I go to the industry, should I go to the academics, but I really like that this very still, hopefully, still like <laughs> the academics world, and then I decided, okay, let's pursue the PhD in this. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, uh, because I also have a background in biotechnology, oh, nice. I've been doing BTEC in biotechnology from India, cool. and then came for masters in Europe, so ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, so, I mean, you're doing your second postdoc, so mm -hmm. it's kind of obvious that you love research. Yes. Uh, right? <laughs> so, what sparked your interest in research? I mean, you've mentioned briefly about this, about the teacher of yours uh, mentioning about the dopamine molecule and the other small molecules. Of yeah, the that was the first moment that I went yeah. in this topic. So, that was the moment? For the you moment that, I, that they wanted to do neuroscience. Yeah, yeah. 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 The moment that they wanted to do research was actually in my master. So, yeah. after the rotation, I said, well, when I kind of started to figure out which topic I like and which yeah. I didn't. Uh -huh. So the moment was that um, after we had a lot of like, you know, mini projects with groups mm -hmm. and after the rotations and all, I said, well, actually this is really cool. I mean, I, mm -hmm. and I also have a lot of friends outside academics, so they do business and all, and they're very successful. Yes. Some of them are less and all. And then every decision you have in life has its own, uh, you know, perks and, um, and costs. But for me, that was so much fun because also just like pure fun because it's the environment, it's the vibe, everything is dynamic. Mm -hmm. Plus, you probably and also like with Richard, probably one of the more advanced questions I saw it's mm -hmm. there, so I can expand a bit more. But basically, what I like about research in the academia is that you have so much freedom mm -hmm. and freedom of thought in this sense. You can that is really true. Yeah. do your own kind of little debate in project mm -hmm. and then run with it. You can be very famous and like you're not even famous or whatever, but you can really start something completely huge. Even if you're part of an other project or whatever, and then you feel like you're a little done, still, it is your own project, and that's mm -hmm. cool. So it's not yeah. like part of a, a project management team or whatever, so you're part of the process, but not really yours, so mm -hmm. it's different. It's not about the egoistic possession thing, mm -hmm. just about the opposite of something that you work on, and then you released to the world as like yeah. for the global contribution yeah. that I like a lot. Yeah. That's a very good perspective on this. Like you nurture it uh, exactly. and yeah, okay. All right, so we move on to the next question. So it will be very nice to know what is your career trajectory until now. So um, how is uh, how is it had been for you? You mentioned briefly about your biotechnology background, mm -hmm. but um, I think it'll be a nice thing for all the prospective PhD students or also if high schoolers are watching and if they want to get into the field of neuroscience, then what is the career path that one potential career path that they can follow? I mean, there are multiple ones, but knowing one one of yours could guide them. So sure. So I, I don't know if I'm a perfect example. <laughs> uh, I think I'm just kind of an average, very common example, I guess. Okay. And I explain on that. So I was very indecisive when I started, like after even after high school. So as I said briefly, so I, I was sure I would end up in computer science because my whole like uh, high school thing was focused on computer science, and I loved it. But then um, after some time, I thought, well, it's. I mean, of course, uh, with all the respect in that, right? So I have many friends in that, and still even today. I, Neuroscience also has to this requirement of programming and I still have yes. to program. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I didn't like that the whole focus would be the computers. Mm -hmm. I like to work with people, I like to think about something like different types of problems. So of course any any field has its own problem and, and challenges and beauty. Yeah. Um, but that's led me to say, okay, I don't like this at this point, let's pursue something else. And then mm -hmm. something that I really I was really like very really like old fashioned at some point went to the mm -hmm. library and checked because I had no idea, you know, to finish high school, I had no idea what is out there. You just yeah. hear these like big words out there, computer science, biology, medicine, whatever, philosophy. Yeah. But really, you don't really know what they studied there, right? Yeah. So really, like, very dumb. I went to the library <laughs> uh, of some university, and then I checked the different fields. I asked people and what's going on. I, back then, it wasn't too much YouTube like now, but uh, I just asked a lot of people, try to gain as much information as possible. Yeah. And still, it's not enough, of course, right? But just started. So I started biology, and uh, I mean this um, biotechnology, and it was wonderful. I love every moment of it. Yeah. But then, yeah, after this physiology course, and I had this spark in neuroscience, so I mm -hmm. said, okay, this is cool, but actually, I want to focus on that. So that was the first point of change. 
what happened in Munich in my second degree? Same mm-hmm. thing. So like uh, I started this, um, I did a master in neuroscience for a, uh, systematic um, neuroscience that gave me a lot of rotations. But then I thought, okay, I did biology, I did microbiology, cellular biology, all these things, yeah. animal models, computational everything. But I actually want to focus on neuroimaging, the cognitive part. Yeah. So again, starting from something, switching again. Yeah. But for me, it's not a bad thing. Like in the beginning, it might, you know, people would say, well, you don't have a clear path. In the beginning, you have to have a clear path. Well, maybe. Maybe it works for some, which is great. Yeah. But I feel more just like to be true to yourself. It's also one of my take home messages in this sense. Mm-hmm. Just don't get stressed out of this. So, like, just really take the time to explore yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. So then I switched to the neuroimaging part, and then I started to look for a PhD in this sense and until I found it, I applied to many and then until I found went to many interviews and all that and once I decided that's the best program for yeah. me, it seems okay, it fits to my interest and I did that. Yeah. And then even after the PhD, even for the first postdoc, I, okay, I did uh, some research in one field but I wanted also some change and then I applied for a grant, I got the grant luckily. Wow. And then I changed to another field and now I got back to the first field. So like mm-hmm. a lot of change with this other thing is awesome as long as you're true to yourself, to what you do. So the main component there is the interest. So that's my part of a lot of in, a lot of like change of uh, preference or change of decisions. Yeah. But even if you have a clear path, go with it. If you're completely indecisive, I would say just start something, mm-hmm. see if it fits. Then even after one yeah. year, you can change. Yeah. Don't get stressed about it too much. Mm-hmm. So it's a very uh, interesting point and a very valid point here that being true to ourselves because to explore what we like and nobody is going to tell us this thing right it's for us to check for ourselves what fits us and what we like so precisely. it's a personal experiment i would say precisely there's one yeah. thing that i would the only thing i would avoid and i have many mm-hmm. friends that follow that if i ha- if i can have an advice regarding this mm-hmm. is don't listen too much to um not to others but especially like, you know, I call it like pre-programmed. Yeah, like we condition ourselves. Exactly, yeah. especially yeah. like uh, something that, for instance, like um, if you have in mind, right? Mm-hmm. If your go- goal in life or aim in life is to success in terms of money, then you try to find the best, but that's fine, okay? Mm-hmm. However, you have the preference. But if it's coming from family, right? So the family, I don't know, your father is uh, doing something and he yeah. wants to, you to do that, right? Or you see the society and then you said, okay, something that would be accepted in my surrounding is this, then you do that. It's not yeah. really something that you want. You explore yourself. Yeah. That's something I'm completely against. And that's, I would say, even if it worked for you for the short run and, and your family would be happy because you do what they they uh, hope for you to do, mm-hmm. in the long run, it won't hold because any of these that type of paths are hard. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice, it's fun in the end, you get a lot of food, but it's hard. Yeah. Once you get to this moment, you're going to don't get the basic support of something that you love to do, mm-hmm. then you will crush. I mean, in, yeah. my, in my experience, like in, in, I know so many stories about it, and you really need a strong support there. So. Yeah, that's a very good, uh, I mean, take home message for all of us, 